All right, YouTubers. So today we are gonna work on taking out this console and we're gonna install a couple of power ports. We're gonna put a power port back here to, for the back seat to use. We're gonna put it down inside our cup holder and we're gonna put one tucked away inside the dash that we're gonna use to power a um, dash cam that we're gonna install. So we're gonna install the dash cam kind of back in behind this rear view mirror and I'll show you we're gonna ride it, route it all around um, and then put in, uh, put it in nice and neat inside here so you don't see it and it's constantly powered on. And then lastly, we're gonna install a power port in the back uh, for our third row. So we'll go over that as well. So now we're gonna cut briefly over to a video I took at the end so you can see the end product that we're gonna be working on today. It's the end of the build. And so I'm gonna show you what we've done. We installed this dash cam up here. And we put it in nice and clean so there's no wires hanging all up underneath. Ran it through the dash, wired the power in under the dash. The other thing we did is down in here, it's the end of the day, so I'm losing my light. We installed a power port. Sorry, I can't really see that, but there's a 12 volt power port in there. Uh, and so we installed that. We installed another power port, much needed in the back. See if I can get your light, there you go. So there's a 12 volt socket now installed right here. So that's what we're gonna work on today. So the first thing we're gonna do, get yourself a little trim tool like this. I got these years ago at Harbor Freight, um, but it's a small little pry tool. And you're just gonna get under here and gently pry this up. And as it pops up, you'll be able to lift it up and then pull back and it'll pop out. Right? And just that easy. So the next part we're going to do is we're going to take out this cup holder and it literally just pulls straight out. So you're going to have to, I've kind of loosened it already, but get a good hold of it and just gently kind of rock it and pull it and it'll just come straight out. There you go. So that part's out. That also gives you easy access to adjust your parking brake. This is your regular shifter cable. Down here below, this little uh, brass little uh, piece, that's actually what you use to tighten up uh, your emergency parking brake. Now, what may not be very obvious is that it's a bit scalloped, so um, it, it stays on this little piece that it's connected to. So as you start to turn it, you're going to have to work your way all the way around. Um, that's not really part of this video, but I just wanted to show you um, tighten that down. You can see kind of the, the nut that's coming off of it. So we can focus. There you go. Um, so tighten it down. Um, you've got to make at least um, like over a half a turn in order for it to seat and go. So you can't turn it a little bit or it'll just go back um, because it's scalloped. So um, you'll see as you do it. But if you need to tighten your emergency brake cable, that's where it is. Right down inside the, the console. So really, if, if that's all you need to do, all you have to do is pop that part out. You don't have to take any of the console out if you're after emergency brake. So a part that I didn't film but I ended up doing later is it's much easier to tighten your parking brake by pulling the parking brake lever up then kind of holding tension on the two cables that are connected behind that nut so that uh, it's loosened and then just very easily screw down that nut and you don't have to worry about trying to tighten it with a wrench. All right, so now that we have those pieces out, we're going to lift this whole piece. It's just going to come out. So we're going to gently grab it from underneath here and just gently start to work on it and pull it up and it'll come up. And so once you've got that lifted, just leave it kind of there and you can see that it's lifted all along the side. Once that's done, then you can get a hold of this guy, pop him up and then out. And there we go. So now those two trim pieces are off and now this piece is loose. All right, so the next part we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the shift knobs. So this guy just unscrews. You just keep going, keep going. It's not connected to the leather. It's just kinda on there. So I'm gonna hold on to the leather and we're gonna take that off. So once you've got it unscrewed, um, it's not connected to the leather, but it is, it, well, it'll spin independently of the leather, but it's still connected. So now that we've got that loose, we're now gonna do the same thing and we're gonna unscrew our four wheel drive. Or, uh, sorry, our high and our low range knob. And that comes off a little bit differently. 
All right, so now that's off. So to take off the emergency brake uh, handle, lift it up, and you'll see underneath that there's a zipper. So you undo the zipper, and then you can slide this up and off. So now, once we've got all this loose, we can start to slide it kind of forward, up and off, and we can start to remove this whole dash panel and have access to underneath. Again, watch out for these electrical connections. So just underneath here, there's an electrical connector, so we're gonna disconnect that first, and that'll allow me to be able to lift it up higher. Okay, so now once we disconnected this white connector here, that's actually the only thing that connects, um, that's the whole harness to this console. So there is the ride control stuff, but this is all connected in through the main um, connector here. So once you can disconnect that one, now we can completely remove it, and we have access to um, get underneath this area. And this is where we're gonna install, uh, we're gonna take this out and put in a power port here that'll allow us to um, connect up just a simple uh, five volt USB connector so that we can have convert 12 to, to whatever we want in the future. But for today, our dash cam. All right, so we need to run power down inside of there. So what we're gonna do is, we already have good access under the dash. We really don't need to replace any or take anything out but we're gonna route a wire all the way through here, and we're gonna go up through the firewall, which I'm gonna show you in a second. I'm also gonna run some some uh, wire back, so I've already gone ahead and removed this. This is for a different power port that I'm gonna put in. That trim piece literally just, if you gently lift, you can just pop it off. So um, that's been popped off. So what we've got, what we're gonna end up doing, you look under here, just inside above the pedals, is a large wire loom that's coming through with a grommet. That's where we're gonna run in. We're gonna make a fused battery connection through that, and then we're gonna come up and run underneath. We're just gonna tuck it up underneath, and we can actually reach um, behind here and go up and through and get into that uh, area. So we're gonna run our power cord through there. We only need one cord for our positive, and we're just gonna ground on the frame so we don't need to run anything back. Um, and so that's how our basic routing is gonna go. All right, so on the other side here, here's the other side of that grommet, uh, just to the, the side of our um, master cylinder. So there's the grommet we're gonna run through, and we're gonna come up here and we're just gonna connect up via fused link um, to our positive terminal. So I just took a piece of stiff wire and just simply poked it through the grommet. I put a bit of a curve on it. Better to go through kind of the bottom side of it and then that's going to come out on the other side. And so now we have our wires poking through and we're going to use that. We're going to tape our actual wire. This is just essentially a guide wire. We're going to tape our actual electrical wire to this and pull it back through uh, and we'll have our connection through the firewall very easily. So now I'm going to take the wire and I'm going to use some electrical tape to tape them together and pull it back through. So I've got my spool of wire connected, so I just overlap them a good bit and put my electrical tape across both and I pinched it down really good. So now these are connected and I can use this wire to pull this through the, the grommet here. So it's hard to film and do at the same time, So, uh, but I just gave just a, a nice smooth pull and a little bit of wiggle and we were able to slide that all the way through. So now we've come through the firewall with a still sealed connection through the grommet. Now I'm gonna undo this, take this off, and route it up through and into our console so that we now have a power wire. I'm also going to um, add a fuse uh, over by the battery so that we have a good, um, easy, easy accessible fuse um, to run all of this. Okay, so if you're watching this, you may not know actually how to make a good electrical connection. So I'm going to try and cover that as well. That was my, not my intention on this video, but I will do my best. So for me, especially on a vehicle that's going to take a little bit of abuse, maybe if you're setting up to overland, um, then you're going to want to solder these connections together, not just crimp. So I do a crimp and then a solder. So you can pick up these uh, fused um, connections at any auto parts store. Um, you can swap out the fuse. They're easy to get to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to solder on, on one end, um, a round connector that we're going to connect to the battery, and on the other end we're going to actually solder that to our main line going in. So if we're going to do electrical solder and be successful, it's real easy to be bad, 
Um, we're going to use some electrical flux. This is not plumbing flux. This is for electrical work. We're going to get a little brush. I've got it in that foil there. Uh, we're going to brush on uh, to both sides, both the, uh, the connection pieces that we want, and then we're going to quickly solder it in. For me, especially outside doing automotive work, I really like a butane torch over an electrical um, soldering iron for this kind of work. All right, we're not doing electrical circuits. Um, we're doing kind of larger connections. This makes quick work of soldering, especially in the field. So if you guys are going to do this kind of work, and especially if you're going to overland, I would suggest a small butane torch to have with you. They work all the time. This actually has a little um, connector that goes on the end of it that gets hot for fine work. Um, but doesn't require electricity and works super fast. So um, we're going to flux this up. Um, I don't have enough hands to do it all at once, but I'm going to kind of show you pieces as we go through. Okay, so we've got a couple things going on here. I've um, added this flux with my brush, brushed it onto all the surfaces, the inside of this little crimp connector that I get at the hardware store. It's just a piece of copper. Um, and then onto both of the pieces of wire. So they're crimped together, but what's going to really make this solid is we're going to solder it. And then I've also got a piece of shrink rack tubing that I cut and I've already pre-added so that once this is done, we can slide it over the top and, uh, and melt it, uh, well not melt it, but heat it up and it'll shrink and cover everything. And we may throw a little extra uh, wrap on top of that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to get this um, hot with our torch, which is going to get it hot really quickly. And then we're going to add a little solder to it and we'll be done. Now I've added some tin foil under all of this uh, just to give us some protection so when we have drips of solder and whatnot, uh, they're going to land on the tin foil and not on the GX. Unfortunately I don't have enough hands but I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to put the torch right on this, I'm going to get it hot and it's going to happen really quickly and then I'm just going to start adding a little bit of solder in here and the flux is going to wick it right into there and we're going to fill this up with solder and it will be essentially brazed which is it's not welding but for our purposes, you can think of it in that sense of it'll be solidly connected um, into thousands of PSI. It will not come apart and we'll have a really good solid electrical connection. All right, so here's the aftermath. Um, again, I put the torch right on that middle copper piece. You can see it burned the insulation a little bit on both sides, uh, but that's okay. Um, we got it nice and hot and I was able to feed solder all the way through it, probably overkilled it but I've now filled the inside with solder and we have a super good connection. And we're gonna put our um, shrink wrap tubing over the top of that and then wrap it with a little bit more electrical tape uh, and we'll be done. We now have a really solid connection. We're essentially gonna do the same thing with a crimp connector over here. We're gonna add to the end of the line, um, but rather than just being a, a piece, we're gonna, we're gonna crimp it and we're gonna fill that void with solder in the same manner. All right, so now we've got our other end connected. You can see I put an eyelet on here. Do not just stick it into the positive terminal. Do yourself a favor, put an actual eyelet on here that you can connect and disconnect um, and, and solder that on as well. So um, I just went right through the, the insulation, which I had to, to kind of burn off in order to get uh, the, the torch to get on there. So I crimped it on and then I um, actually put it in with solder. So now we have a soldered connection, super solid, uh, I've got my fuse in here. In this case, I'm going to be running some heavier stuff, so I put a 20 amp fuse. I've also got heavy gauge wire going back. For most of your application, if you're just doing a dash, dash cam or something, um, 15 would be max. You probably want to go with a really just a 10 amp fuse would be all you need. Um, so there we go. I'm not going to connect it yet because we still have work to do uh, inside the car. But this has now been run through and is ready to be connected up to the car. Now. If you want to really shortcut this, and, and it, I shouldn't call it a shortcut because it would be totally fine, you can just pop this off. And if you wanted to tap into the 12 volt hot that's on the back of this port and run a second line to the connector under here, that would be totally fine. And it's probably, if all you're going to do is put in a dash cam, just add a connector into this hot, and that'll be your power. And then you can just put a connector that you'll see me do later underneath this and you'll be done. Now for me, I'm doing a lot more power throughout the GX and so I'm going to go ahead and run my own power lines um, to supply additional power to run multiple you know, high draw things like you know, a lot of newer electronics and things. So I'm running a much thicker wire through here um, because I'm doing a lot more than just a dash cam. But if that's all you want to do, 
then just tap into that and put the the 12 volt power supply or not power supply but 12 volt socket that you're gonna see me put in a little bit just tie right into that and you'd be done It'd be super easy you don't need to do any of the complicated wiring that I've been showing so that's another really good option for that all right so with the seat pulled all the way forward you can see that there's a little screw right here and that is the third screw that you need to take out and there's number four on the other side okay so this uh, rear kind of audio and temperature control literally just pops out a little piece of trim tool and you can just slip this out there's no screws or anything it comes apart now the last part to taking the console out is this little um, flap is on the bottom so you've got to peel this out and when you peel it out lo and behold there's the last two bolts to take this so there we go we've got the two easily accessible screws there we have the two that you saw on the side and then the two that go in the bottom and once we do that out it comes and now we have access to our console and to put in some more accessories so here are the power ports that i ordered got these off amazon so, but this is about how deep they are. So we need a pretty deep space to put them. And upon investigating, I think the best place, if you wanna put one in the back, is gonna be right in the center. So there's a void under here where we've got a lot of cables and things going um, for the transmission, but um, that gives us a lot more space. Something in the back, there just isn't room um, to have this kind of depth. All right, so we got a one and a quarter inch hole saw, and we're gonna drill our hole. So there we go. Drilled our hole through, and now we're going to mount up our power. Here we go. So I slipped it through. So there's our mount. Turn it over. There's what it looks like inside. Pretty good. So now we're going to start wiring it up. All right. So now it's installed. I've got the this part of the console put back, and now we have a power port down in here. Now this comes with um, a little cover, so I'm going to put that in there to keep it shielded when I'm not using it. All right, so now we're working on routing our wiring. So we're gonna tuck it up here behind the windshield trim, and then we're gonna come down, we're gonna remove this piece of trim so we can put our wire behind it. So the first thing I did was get my little trim tool and I just popped these covers off. And so now we're gonna unscrew these. And once we take these out, this piece will just um, pop out and then we can route our wire behind it very easily. All right, so now we're gonna route, we're gonna work on routing our wiring. So we need to go from underneath down in through here, we're gonna come back up. And so I'm gonna remove this trim piece. And all I did was slip my handy little trim tool under here and just gently pry it back. And it'll start to come from the bottom and then you're just gonna slowly slide it and just pop it out. Be very careful. You know, these the older GXs, this plastic gets kind of brittle. So once you've got that out, then we've got access to route from underneath through here and we're gonna be able to come back through behind this glove box by dropping it down. We're gonna come back through and then we're gonna go up and we're gonna fish it from there up to the top here. And then once, because we've got this trim piece off, we can get behind there and route it up. All right, so I have this piece of Romex, just one, one strand, but it's solid copper wire that's bendable. We could use a coat hanger or something too. So I've fished it down through here down and I was able to catch it underneath and I've now taped it to the end of my uh, USB cord that came with uh, the system that we're going to end up routing. So we're going to pull it up through here and once we are able to get it up here we're actually going to route it, sorry up here, we're going to route it back down so we're kind of going to do, we're going to um, jump around. We're going to get it up to here and then we're going to use that to be able to pull it down along. So that's the next step. We're going to pull it through. Okay, so we gently pulled that through and now we're going to leave it connected. We're going to use this other end and we're going to keep fishing it down and through until we get it all the way across. Okay, so I disconnected the cable and the, the fishing wire and I fished it down the side. Down inside here and back here. You can see that white wire. Right, and so now I've been able to, to pull it out which is also where we've currently got our USB cable fish to. So I'm gonna tape these back together and put on, pull it on up through, and then we'll put it inside this trim and up and over we go, uh, over to the mirror and we'll have our wire routed, easy peasy. All right, so we pulled it on up through. So now we've got it all the way up here to the A-pillar. So 
Uh, we were able to pull it through, just hopscotching through behind the, um, just going in. All I did was pinch the glove box, be able to drop it down a little bit more, and I could reach in there um, and get all the way through. Okay, so I've got it mounted, and um, I'm put it down a little bit so that I can see it. And then you can see I just just pushed the cable up underneath the headliner. It just pops in there. And then I've reinstalled this A-pillar cover. We're going to reinstall it. Now we have a clean install all the way down. So I'm starting to put everything back together. I did have to cut a hole. It's not the prettiest thing, but um, this little rubber mat that comes out to let you get to those bolts that are under here. I'll show you that. Right, there's those bolts. Um, so... Um, I did have to cut it a little bit, um, but it's deep inside of here, you know, I suppose I could have done it a little better, but whatever, it's fine. Um, so now it's covered up, um, we're going to keep installing, so start putting everything back, going to put these two side screws in, going to put this, uh, plug this guy back in and put him together, um, got to put the, this cup holder just slops in there, got to install our screws and everything, I'll just show you. Um, so this is my 12 volt socket It's got the USB Adapter plugged into it that came with my uh, dash cam and then the dash cam of course is plugged into that And then I've just put some electrical tape all around it just to hold all this stuff together It's gonna live down inside of here, so you'll never see it um, But so that's a, a simple way to get 12 volt here uh, and convert it to the, the USB connection that the camera requires uh, and so that's been routed around. Again, rather than doing this, I could have also just simply connected it on the back end to this existing 12 volt, but I was already running other power through here and I'm gonna leave this on all the time, uh, which I want to have happen. Uh, whereas this cigarette would uh, lighter would automatically turn on and off with a car, so that would be handy. But for me, um, this one has motion detection and stuff on it. So I'm gonna leave it running all the time. So when it's parked in my driveway, uh, I've got a camera that's kind of watching and doesn't turn off when the car turns off. So here's the aftermath. We're all installed. So now, didn't have any power port in here before, but now I do. So now I've got a 12 volt, I can plug whatever I want in there. And it's high capacity, way more than what the stock would have. Got the console back together. And then secretly down inside all of this is my dash cam that is all now very cleanly wired up right here. All right, so now for the last part, working on running one last 12 volt power port. And I think I'm going to put it in this kind of compartment here, maybe in the bottom. So I need to take this panel out. And so we're going to start by popping these off. You can see where I took a few off. Uh, just got a little screwdriver under there. We're going to remove this trim piece. We're gonna pull out some of this carpet and I'm gonna go through the different parts that uh, we need to, to get this panel off so that we can uh, drill out a hole for our 12 volt and we can wire it up. And then we'll have power in the back for passengers and for whatever kind of utility we need. So I really had to get my trim tool kind of up under here to start popping this off. Once I started popping it, it starts coming out. All right, so we gotta take out the seat belt. So that's a 14 millimeter, so we're gonna take that out. Then our seat connector, we're gonna use our trim tool. We're gonna pop these up, and these two guys are gonna come out. There we go, so simply just unbolts. And then lastly, we're gonna get this front seat belt uh, connected. Or I should say disconnected. So to take this off, you kind of push a little bit out, but also down to slip this off. So it just pops off, and then again, 14 comes off. All of these are 14 on the side. And then we need to take off the step panel. So we're going to pop these two little covers off and unbolt this and take it out so we can get the trim out. Once that piece is out, then we're just going to work our fingers under and just pop this off. It's just uh, little connected trim pieces. And uh, I plan to just fish through here. I don't think we need to remove that. That's going to give us an ac enough access to run our cable down through here. And then we're going to take this panel off and give us access inside of there. So I just got a hold of it under here and started pulling so we're just going to keep popping start pulling this pieces off yeah so i just worked my way down kept pulling pulling and out it came so now we have access to get in the back and i think that's enough i'm not going to bother pulling this out any further that gives me enough access for a ground bolt and to run my power wire in 
this guy pops out, so I'm just going to drill a hole through him and install my power port. Popping this guy out, it was actually easier to kind of come under and push from underneath, but he just pops out. So now we've got good access and it's going to be quick and easy to drill something uh, and, and put it in the bottom. Alright, so I didn't really show it on the last one, so I'll just show you this. So, slip this little rubber guy on first. I made that mistake the first time, had to take it back out. So, uh, this guy goes on before you put it in. Just very simply cut a one and a quarter inch hole. This guy slips in there. It's got a nice clean border. Turn it to where you want. And then this little backup nut uh, screws on there. And then that's installed. Simple as that. And then we're going to hook up um, our uh, power wire that's coming from the front. I've got our positive. And then I'm just going to find a good um, uh, local grounded bolt to connect a uh, ground wire to. And we'll just ground to the frame. There we all installed. So we just got it on the back. We got our nice cover. Kind of orientate it so it pops out of the way. So again, we can put in whatever kind of USB adapter we want. I just went with um, just a regular old cigarette lighter style so that I can swap this out whenever I want because things keep evolving. I don't want to have to come wire up a different USB-C or you know whatever kind of stuff that I might want in the future. This gives me a lot of flexibility. So just a good old simple 12 volt socket and then I can put whatever kind of adapter or air compressor or whatever I want to run out of this here. So now we're going to wire this up back through here. Okay, so I want to show you this as I'm routing this through. Very easily able to fish under that, so no need to deal with that. Notice that I'm going under the clips. As I'm routing my wire from the front, just going through the clips, fish it under, and onto the back. So now we're going to fish it through here, and we'll end up in the back. Right, so now we're all wired in. Got our nice clean power port over here. Everything just snapped back together starting in the front. Snapped it all in. Snapped this tray back in. I ended up running the ground just kind of right over here right to this little um, spot. You can see where it's connected in. Um, so I wired in the ground here on this jack. Um, so now we have power. Now I'm just going to go in reverse and put it all back together. And we are done.